Welcome back to an introduction to basic concepts of maintenance and reliability. In this lecture, I am going to introduce you to another maintenance philosophy that is very important to be known by any maintenance and reliability professional. It is called total productive maintenance. Just like we discussed in reliability-centered maintenance, that it is not just a type of maintenance like preventive, corrective, or predictive maintenance, total productive maintenance is similar in this respect. Total productive maintenance is a complete maintenance philosophy given by Seichi Nakajima. Pardon the pronunciation. He was a Japanese founder of the TPM system in the 1960s. He was honored by the Emperor of Japan with a medal with blue ribbon. In recognition to the impact of his TPM philosophy in improving the manufacturing industry of Japan. The very name of this philosophy expresses its key concept. The term total in total productive maintenance emphasizes the involvement of the entire organization in the maintenance process. It refers to the realization that good maintenance cannot be undertaken just by considering it a responsibility of a maintenance technicians. The responsibility is to be owned by everyone, from top management to the frontline workers. The term productive highlights the objective of total productive maintenance, which is to optimize productivity. Total productive maintenance seeks to eliminate all forms of losses such as breakdowns, defects, and inefficiencies that can hinder the smooth operation of equipment. The metric that is at the core of total productive maintenance and which was first coined with the TPM philosophy is the overall equipment effectiveness or simply OEE. The total productive maintenance system aims to maximize the overall equipment effectiveness of the equipment in the plant. So what is this overall equipment effectiveness? Do you remember one of our earlier lectures in which we discussed the basic metrics in equipment reliability? Understanding of overall equipment effectiveness is based on these same metrics. For any plant equipment, there is always a total available time in which it can run. If there is no restriction from the manufacturer regarding how long can the equipment run non-stop, this total time is simply 24 hours and 30 days a month. However, machines are not operated for this long. Therefore, within this total available time, there is a scheduled run time a scheduled downtime and some idle time in which there is no need for production and the factory is closed. With the time in which the machine is scheduled to run, there can be unexpected breakdowns resulting in unscheduled downtime. That is just natural. It happens. Therefore, the actual uptime of the machine is the remaining time in which it runs without breakdowns. This is where the first component of overall equipment effectiveness comes in. It is called availability. It is the percentage ratio of uptime to whatever time is left after removing idle time. Moving forward, Every machine has a best production rate or a speed which expresses its performance. However, 
During its uptime, the machine can experience speed losses and minor stoppages. These issues affect its performance because the actual production rate or speed becomes less than what the machine can offer at its best. This performance is the second component of overall equipment effectiveness. It is the percentage ratio of actual to best production rate of an equipment. Finally, based on its actual production rate, the machine will produce a certain number of units. However, not all units produced will be of acceptable quality. Some units will have defects, which will result in either rejection of the finished product or the need to do some rework on it. Therefore, the first time pass ready to be sold units will be a percentage of the total units produced. This percentage, known as quality, is the third component of overall equipment effectiveness. It is simply the percentage of first time pass ready to be sold units as compared to the total units produced. So the three components of overall equipment effectiveness are availability, performance, and quality. Overall equipment effectiveness is simply the product of these three components. So if a hydraulic press remained available 80% of the time in which it ran at its best production rate for 90% of the time and produced 88% quality units, its overall equipment effectiveness will be around 63%. It is this metric that TPM aims to maximize. Maximization of the overall equipment effectiveness depends on removing losses wherever they are. Uptime will be maximized by minimizing the downtimes, both scheduled and unscheduled. Scheduled downtime will improve by optimizing the maintenance program. The unscheduled downtime is caused by unexpected breakdowns. It can be reduced by improving equipment reliability through reliability-centered maintenance or any other advanced maintenance program. Maximization of actual production rate will require reducing speed losses and minor stoppages. Finally, quality rate will be improved by reducing quality losses. This too will need good maintenance of equipment to ensure quality production. Once these losses have been reduced, we will get increased availability, increased runtime at best production rate, and improved quality rate. Resultantly, the overall equipment effectiveness will be improved. This is how the total productive maintenance system aligns the top management and the frontline maintenance teams to reduce all types of losses and improve the overall equipment effectiveness of plant equipment. The ultimate goal of the TPM system is maximum overall equipment effectiveness through zero defects and zero accidents. With this, we conclude our discussion on total productive maintenance. See you in the next lecture.